<clears throat> Alright, hey, shalom, akim, shalom. As always, before I begin, I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to our power. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakudash. Double honor to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders of Great Millstone that have taught us this word and that Ruel. And peace and blessings go out to the hopeful members of the elect scattered throughout the four winds of the earth that are in the hopes of receiving salvation from my Lord and Savior, Yahweh during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? Now, we just heard me say in the beginning of this video, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai are the true names of the Heavenly Father and of His beloved Son, okay? And according to the book of Zephaniah, the third chapter, the Heavenly Father said that in the latter days, He would bring back unto the nation of Israel, consisting of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, all right, the true descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, a pure language, where we'd be calling upon the name of the Heavenly Father in one consent, okay? And that prophecy has taken effect in this generation that we're living in, where the Heavenly Father has finally stirred up the pure minds of the nation of Israel back to the way of remembrance that we are His chosen people, okay? And that the Heavenly Father, the God of the Bible, pertains to no other nation but unto Israel, all right? And we know all this according to what the volume of the book has in store as you read it, and of course, with the gift of faith that has not been shown unto everybody okay the true name of the heavenly father is yahweh who you see in front of you who the world ignorantly calls god or jehovah which the name yahweh means he is or he to be bahashem ba means in ha means the and shem means name in the name of his son yahweh shai okay who you see in front of you who the world ignorantly calls jesus christ or yeshua which the name yahweh shai means he delivers or the deliverer like I broke down, Bahashim means in the name, Racha means spirit, and Kodash means holy. All right. And this video is brought to you via the Holy Spirit to continue to push forward unto our nation of what's coming down the pipe to further build up the elect for what, um, you know, the allotted testimony and the allotted walk that we have to walk down into during the time where a great insurrection is going to come upon those that fear the Heavenly Father, and to further usher in and show you that the words of the Heavenly Father are faithful and true, and by marrying with what's happening with the current events, doing so, okay? And as you can see, the title of the lesson is, At the End It Shall Speak, okay? And what is speaking right now, loud and clear throughout the four winds of the earth, is... The M-O to the T to the B, man, okay? Right now you have, um, you know, a lot of brothers bringing out um, this institution called the BIS, which stands for the Bank for International Settlements, which is um, a financial institution that gives banking services a platform for national central banks to discuss uh, the money supply and to further bring forth the rules to control so-called inflation and ultimately the way you handle money, okay? And ultimately, this is doing nothing but furthering an alley-oop, all right, to this mandation, which is what is spoken of in Revelation, the 13th chapter, man, okay? So without further ado, we're going to um, grab Habakkuk, all right? Because this is the time that we're living in, man. All right, where the prophecies of Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, are being made manifest in the eyes of the people, man. Okay, but the only ones that have the eyes to see and the ears to hear of the word of the Heavenly Father coming to pass is the elect and the ones that have, have <clears throat> excuse me, that have been allotted to receive His word. Okay, of course you got Edomites that. Edomites, Jakes, as well as these other nations that see this MLTB technology ultimately being pushed forward, but at the end of the day, they don't see the bigger picture behind it. And ultimately, they don't know that the prophecies of the Heavenly Father reveal this whole NWO, man. Okay? So once again, the water Yahweh Bahashimi Hawashai for giving us his word to understand not only what this technology is and what this whole 
you know, BIS is doing, but for giving us the understanding of what is going to be the end all be all of this, you know, M-A-R-K, man. Okay. This is Habakkuk chapter two, verse, um, starting at the top, verse one. It says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. Okay. And this is the duty of somebody that calls himself a prophet of the heavenly father. All right. Whether you call yourself a bishop, um, a leader of the nation of Israel, this is what you're supposed to be doing, man. Okay. Sitting on your watchtower, which the modern watchtower of today's time is the internet. All right. Your modern day phone, your computer, because by this technology that the heavenly father has bestowed upon Esau to create, we're able to distinguish and see what's happening throughout the four winds of the earth and marry it with what the scriptures speak about. Okay. It says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord Yahweh answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables. All right. And this is what we're doing right now, man. All right. The prophets of the heavenly father, starting off with the men of great millstone. All right. Have been speaking about the prophecy written in Revelation, the 13th chapter, starting at the 16th verse decades ago. Okay. Prophesying about this uh, prophecy when it didn't even look like it was going to happen. Okay. But guess what? In today's time, this generation that we're living in, it's starting to be it's starting to be made known, man. Okay. Like um, the title of the lesson at the end, it shall speak. All right. And we're at the end, man. Okay. It says that he may run that readeth it. All right. For uh, the third verse, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. All right. This didn't take place during the time of uh, Habakkuk. This didn't take place during the time of the Greek captivity, the Roman captivity, when Yahweh was on the scene. No, man. This prophecy is taking effect in this lifetime that we're living in. All right. Where if you don't take this MLTB, you're going to be made unto a martyr. OK, and if you take it, well, you're going to ultimately punch yourself a ticket and have a first class seat in a partaker of the nuclear destruction that the Heavenly Father has allotted for those that take this mark, man. OK. As well as being charted underfoot, man, which Lord's will we'll get that scripture next verse uh, three. It says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Okay. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. All right. And this prophecy sure as hell isn't tearing anymore, man. Okay. Real quick. that um, That's a perfect time to pull up this article for um, under BIS.org where it gives you the blueprint of what the end all be all of this organization is trying to do. Okay. And it's all under the name of something called a unified ledger. Okay. And when you break down that term unified as brothers should know means unite or bringing something together and ledger is matter of fact, um, real quick, just to, Right, a fire in it. it says a book that lies permanently in some specified place. All right. Quick uh, definition from the new Oxford American Dictionary, a book or other collection of financial accounts. OK. Account book, record, archives, balance sheet, financial statement. OK. And this is ultimately what Esau is trying to bring forth. This term is nothing else but synonymous for what the MLTB is, man. OK, which brings together all your records and all your financial accounts, man. All right. And under this term and the jurisdiction of a bank um, for international settlements, 
not only do they have the power to see what you're doing, but they have the ability to program what you're supposed to be spending and what you're not supposed to be spending. Okay. And this article is going to, you know, like the scripture said in the book of Habakkuk, uh, the second chapter, man. Okay. This article does nothing but makes it plain upon tables. All right. It says blueprint for the future monetary system. All right. And the word monetary means uh, it's pretty much synonymous for the word uh, money supply or the way how money works. Okay. It says improving the old, enabling the new. And I'm going to just read the key takeaways that are um, bullet pointed. Uh, Bob, uh, Salakia. Matter of fact, yeah, Khan, if I uh, remember, I'll post this article in the link of the description of this video. Just, you know, for brothers to read this lengthy article. Okay. But for time's sake, we're just going to hit the points. And then, of course, marry it with the scriptures. It says, for the first bulletin point, it says, tokenization of money and assets has great potential, but initiatives to date have taken place in silos without access to central bank money and the foundation of trust it provides. Okay. And this is ultimately, ultimately what the BIS is going to do. All right. It's going to merge all these different um, cryptocurrency, cryptocurrencies like, uh, Ethereum, you know, um, so on and so forth, you know, it's going to merge all that to one playing field where everybody's going to be programmed and controlled. OK, real quick, let's look up this word uh, tokenization. Matter of fact, lucky because I was reading a couple um paragraphs of this article. And if I'm not mistaken, yep, it gives us a definition right here. In the third paragraph, it says today, the monetary system stands at the cusp of another major leap following dematerialization and digitalization, the key development of tokenization. OK, which is what the process of representing claims digitally on a what a pro programmable platform. OK, meaning what programmable, meaning that they're going to be able to to have their hand inside of your money purse, man. Okay. And real quick, just for the sake of edification, looking up that word tokenization, it means when applied to data security is the process of substituting a sensitive data element with a non-sensitive equivalent referred to as a token that has no in intrinsic or exploitable meaning or value. Okay. The token is a reference that maps back to the sensitive data through a tokenization system. OK, pretty much showing you what. That when these blackouts come forth and when Esau comes down with great wrath and brings forth that sedition amongst men and complete pandemonia throughout these cities. Not only is everybody going to be on the same playing field, but this is going to um, bring forth this system of tokenizing uh, tokenization man okay where everybody's gonna have that same token to be able to buy and sell okay which is what the mot to the b man all right and that's what esau's coming down with man all right if persuasion doesn't work he's gonna use the persuasion of his power all right and that's gonna be with the act of Pursuing to Isaiah 5 and 20, putting forth good as bad and putting forth bad as good. All right. And having a motive of targeting those that stand against this whole NWO, man. All right. This is what's coming down the pipe for those of you that call yourselves Israelites. All right. And once again, something that, um you know, the spirit has me to say a lot. This is the legacy that our forefathers held in our history, man, all right, of standing for our power, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, okay, just like, you know, the history of the Maccabean brothers, all right, that entire revolt, I'm sorry, that entire revolt was nothing but um, a depiction 
all right, if you will, of the legacy of our nation, man, of standing for that which is upright, which is keeping the commandments of the Heavenly Father and fearing Him, Abaratiza, until, you know, death has to play its part, man. All right, this is what's coming down the pipe for a lot of you Israelites that really don't understand what you're involved in, man. All right. Matter of fact, real quick, um, let me grab this scripture in Second Ezra the sixteenth chapter. Matter of fact, let me just look it up. Great insurrection. Okay, and the reason why the Heavenly Father is putting the Spirit upon His prophets to continue to push forward with Revelation 13 and 16 is because it's about to happen, man. Okay, in order for this vision to be completely sealed in the minds of the elect, it has to constantly be, uh, it has to constantly be repeated, man. Okay, but a lot of these Jakes that think that, you know, like the beloved apostles and elders always say, they're boring because they speak about the same, you know, shit, which isn't shit, of course. But, you know, speaking in the language of these Jakes that have a glaze of being an Israelite, they don't understand what they're involved in, man. And most importantly, their vision, the vision of America being destroyed is not in their minds, man. All right. And roughly paraphrasing Proverbs 29 and 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law of the Heavenly Father, happy is he. And that's what we're doing, man. All right? The vision of what's coming down the pipe is sealed in our minds. And we're keeping, to the best of our ability, the commandments that the Heavenly Father has given upon us. Which is to continue to feed his sheep, exhort the elect, and to continue to stand and be bold as lions for our power, man. OK, and this is what's going to come down the pipe. And this is ultimately what every last single Israelite that comes in the name of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai is going to face. This is second Ezra chapter 16. <clears throat> verse. Um, verse 67. OK, behold. The Heavenly Father Himself is the judge. Fear Him. Okay? And that's the point, man. Fear nobody else but Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Okay? And just like uh, Yahweh Shai said in the book of Matthews, man. All right? Matter of fact, real quick. Where's my blue letter right here? In Matthews 12. Matter of fact, it's lucky. Let me look it up in my scriptures. All right, we ain't got nothing to fear when it comes to to us to a man, okay? Just like uh, like it tells in Psalms the ninth chapter, man, the heavenly Father is gonna come down and bring forth his indignation and finally set the record straight that every other nation, all right, under heaven is nothing but a man, okay? This is the book of Matthew chapter, let me see here, Matthew 10 and 26, Salaki. It says, fear not, uh, fear them not, therefore, for, matter of fact, Salaki. Is it this scripture? Salaki, verse 28, excuse me. It says, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and and body in hell okay and that ultimately speaking about the heavenly father bringing forth not only the flesh under a very you know painful death but the spirit is going to be in a state of torment man okay that's what it's speaking about it's not speaking about the heavenly father casting you into uh you know a mythical place under the earth where there's a so-called, you know, man in all red with horns and a pitchfork. No, man. This is speaking about the Heavenly Father bringing a divine death by pain to those that 
fear other men, okay? And ultimately, that don't follow the words of the prophets, okay? So from there, jumping back to 2nd Ezra 16 and 67, it says, Behold, the Heavenly Father himself is the judge. Fear him. Leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities to meddle no more with them forever, okay? And just like uh, Apostle Paul told the Church of Philip, man, cast away those things that you once were affiliated with before you and look towards the things ahead of you, man. Okay? It says, So shall the Heavenly Father lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. Okay? Let me read that again. It says, So shall the Heavenly Father lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. All right? And the true worshipers of Yahweh Bahashim Yahawashai are going to be in that exact mindset. Okay? Of putting all their cares upon the Heavenly Father and trusting that He's going to put us in a secret place. All right? Not only does the secret place start off with His word, but it's going to take a physical form during the time of Jacob's trouble where the Heavenly Father is going to protect His. Okay? Verse 68, it says, For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you. And they shall take away certain of you and feed you, being idle with things offered unto idols. Okay? And once again, referring back to the Maccabean brothers. They had to be a partaker of the scripture. And guess what? As just like them, as they were looked upon as martyrs during the time of uh, Antiochus Epiphanes. All right? The same thing is going to happen unto us in this captivity that we're in. Okay? Verse 69, and they that consent, meaning they that consent to this NWO and take that MO to the T to the B. And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and in reproach. Why? Because ultimately this NWO is nothing but a further enslavement. Okay. Complete control over what you're doing, your ins and your outs. The commodities that you're buying, Esau is going to have an eye on you, okay? And I don't mean that figuratively. He is going to have an eye on you, all right? Just like when you see the movie Demolition Man, okay? There were cameras all over the goddamn place, man. And what, what else was there? The MLTB upon the people, man, okay? <clears throat> Verse 70, it says, For there shall be in every place and in the next city a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. Okay? And just for the sake of edification, let's look up the word insurrection. Just to paint the picture of what's going to happen upon those, like it said, that fear the Lord. It says, An uprising against civil authority. And the civil authority that they're, they're going to be coming up against is the elect of the Heavenly Father and those that stand against all this BS that Esau thinks he's going to fulfill, man. Okay? It says, a rising up to rise up. Insurgent. Okay? And under the noun um, definition, it says, one who rises in revolt against a government or its laws, okay? And like I said, Esau's going to use his sword in the connotation of his speech, all right? To further persecute the prophets of the Heavenly Father, man, okay? Just like it tells you in Amos 5 and 10. Um, matter of fact, Salaki. Scripture escapes my mind of how that scripture goes. Amos 5 and 10. It says, they hate him that rebuketh in the gate, okay? And they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. And that's first and foremost going to take place when the Heavenly Father puts his spirit upon Esau to bring forth the famine of the word and fulfill 2nd Ezra, the 16th chapter of that great insurrection coming upon those 
that stand in the name of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, man. Okay. This is what's coming down the pipe. All right. And real quick, I just wanted to grab this scripture that I stumbled upon um, yesterday. John chapter 8, verse 40. It says, but now ye seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth. Okay. And this is what's going to be happening during the time of Jacob's trouble. All right. Just like it tells you in Revelation, the 20th chapter, some of us are going to have to be beheaded for the testimony of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh man. Okay. But guess what? This is what we've signed up for, man. All right. Whether you like it or not, whether you were ignorant of the fact that this is what you signed up for, if you don't gird up your loins like a man, you will perish when the time of Jacob's trouble comes and where those that speak upright are going to be persecuted, man. Okay. And you're going to fold and crumble like a cookie. It says, a man that has told you the truth, which I have heard of the heavenly father, this did not Abraham. All right. But the point was in the first uh, couple sentences. Okay. They're going to seek to kill those that speak truth. Okay. And just like it tells you in uh, John, the 16th chapter. All right. If I'm not mistaken, John 16 and one, it says, these things have I spoken unto you. They should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh. And that time is slowly but surely coming, man. Okay. Sooner than we expect. This time is going to come. When this is going to happen. That whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth the heavenly father's service. Okay. And why? Under the sword of Esau. With his propaganda. Okay. Propagating that the Israelites. Okay. Or like they like they had. Uh, Salaki, I can't. Let me calm down. Like they. You know, name us the black Hebrew Israelites. Okay. Esau is going to come in the name of propaganda to further bring forth that great insurrection. Okay. And ultimately, like I said, it's going to be under the power. I'm sorry. It's going to be under the persuasion of his power, man. Okay. Matter of fact, let me keep reading. Verse three, it says, and these things will they do unto you because they have not known the father nor me. Okay. But these things have I told you that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. Okay. And that's the point, man. When this happens, understand and have a clear conscience that Yahweh Shai told you that you were going to go through this. Okay. So don't be surprised. All right. Because this is what you signed up for. All right. To be an ambassador of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai and a servant slash minister unto him. Okay. It says, and these things I said not. Slug you. I'm fuck so lucky, brothers. God damn. Okay, we'll just keep rolling so lucky. It says, And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me, whither goest thou? Okay, and that was the point. Alright? But think it not strange when all this falls upon us, man. Okay? Because at the end of the day, this is what we've signed up for. All right. We've been called into the ministry of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. And in the time of Jacob's trouble, we're really going to see who's chosen and who's about Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, man. Okay. So let's go back to 2nd Ezra uh, 16. And then let me pull back up this article and keep reading. And like I said, uh, I'll post this article in the link or the description box so you brothers can read it for yourselves. Um, under the second uh, bulletin point, it says a new type of financial market infrastructure, which is what a unified ledger could capture the full benefits of tokenization by combining central bank money, tokenized deposits and tokenized assets on a programmable platform. 
Okay? Meaning what? That they're going to bring everything full circle. All right? All these different digital currencies are going to be under one jurisdiction where everything is going to be programmable. All right? Let's look up this word programmable. It says... Uh, let me look up a quick definition. I don't want all that extra stuff. Straight to the point. It says, able to be provided with coded instructions for the automated performance of a task. Okay. And this is all under the name of what? Once again, Esau's deception of carbon dating, of saving the earth. All that bullshit, man. Okay. Esau is doing this to con further control you, you know, first and foremost, you Israelites, but at the end of the day, the entire world, man, okay? Just like I tell, uh, it tells you in Ezekiel, the 28th chapter, Esau really thinks he is the Heavenly Father, all right? But once again, matter of fact, let me grab that scripture, man, in Psalms 9 chapter. <clears throat> Psalms chapter 9. Verse 19, straight to the point. It says, Arise, O Yahweh, let not man prevail. All right, let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. And that's what the Heavenly Father is going to do, man. All right. He's going to take all those thoughts and the enterprise of Esau away. Okay. And flush it down the toilet. It says, put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. All right. And reading it in the NLT, it says, make them tremble in fear, O Lord. Let the nations know they are merely human. Okay. And that's what the Lord's bringing down to Esau, man. Okay. A big plate of nothing but reality. Okay, a fat reality check. <clears throat> Three, the, uh, the third bullet to point, it says, as well as improving existing processes through the seamless integration of transactions, a unified ledger could harness programmability to enable arrangements that are currently not practicable, thereby expanding the universe of possible economic outcomes okay which further shows you the end all be all of his goal man which is to, to um control everything okay and this is already being seen through um just like the apostle gabar had made a video man okay your credit card your debit card that is Ultimately, what they're trying to, uh, you know, further bring with this MLTB, man. All right. Where all transactions are going to be monitored under this little CHIP. And all your information is going to be there. Okay. The fourth, uh, definite, uh, so like your fourth bulleted point, it says multiple ledgers, each with a specific use case might coexist interlinked by application programming interfaces to ensure interoperability as well as promote financial inclusion and a level playing field okay now let's grab revelation the 13th chapter man okay because that's what's happening both small and great rich and poor no matter what social status what you know tier for the lack of a better term you're right in society, you're going to be on the same playing field as everybody, okay? Revelation 13, verse 16, it says, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a M-A-R-K, all right, charagma, in the right hand or in their foreheads, Okay? And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Okay? And that's going to take place very soon, man. Alright? 
And once again, uh, a movie that all the apostles, the bishops, and the elders always, you know, allude to, Demolition Man, shows you this, okay? When uh, Sylvester Stallone, I forget the name of his character in the movie, but when he was um, defrosted from his prison that he was concealed in, all right, he didn't know how to operate, okay? If it wasn't for, you know, the help of, you know, the police department that he was with, he would be in shambles, okay? And that's ultimately the lot that the elect and the ones that stand against this BS are going to be in, okay? But that's where the divine intervention of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai has to take place in order for the elect to be saved, okay? And that's what's coming to pass, man. It will come to pass, excuse me. Verse 17, it says, And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Okay? And that's what's coming down the pipe, man. Alright? That's where the true character of the elect are going to be seen. Okay? And the true character of those that trust in oppression, that trust in the power of Egypt, are going to be made known. Okay? That's when... When Yahweh Shai said that he's going to depart, um, matter of fact, let me grab that scripture. This is when this is going to take place. This is Matthew chapter 25, verse 32. It says, and before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another. As a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats, okay? And this is first and foremost speaking about the Israelites, okay? Because that's the only nation the Heavenly Father is dealing with, okay? But the sheep are symbolic for those that are going to stand and be bold as lions when this mandation comes forth, okay? And the goats are synonymous for those that take heed thereto according to the ways of Esau, okay? Verse 33, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. All right. One is going to be destined for salvation and the other one is going to be destined for destruction. All right. Matter of fact, let me see if. Come on, that's pretty much it on this article. And like I said, I'll, I'll post this um, link in the description box of this video just so you brothers can further do your. Um, due diligence and see this whole um, system that they're going to be implementing very soon, man. <clears throat> so reading on in second edge of the sex, uh, 16th chapter, it says, um, where was he at? Verse 70, it says, For there shall be in every place and in the next cities, a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Heavenly Father. Okay? So, just like Yahawashai, okay? He had to go through his darkest hour. Okay? Meaning what? That we got to go through that same position of being persecuted and truly seeing where our faith stands. Okay? Verse 72, for they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. And this is the point, man. Okay. Then shall they be known who are my chosen and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. Okay. Verse 74, hear, O ye, my beloved, saith the Lord. The days of trouble are at hand. And that's the time that we're in, man. All right. We're complete. Pandemonia is going to be surrounding every person, okay? But this is the point, and this is ultimately where the faith of the elect is going to stand, and this is where they're going to be leaning upon. But I will deliver you from the same. Be not afraid, neither doubt, for Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, is your guide, 
Okay? And that's the point, man. All right? This is what the process of us, when we first came into the truth, has been consisting of. Okay? Building up the relationship that you have with the Heavenly Father. And when the trying of your faith is on the table, you're going to see what, who you really are. Okay? So with that, Lord's will, this video was edifying and straight to the point. Uh, Lord's will, this video, you know, brought forth edification to the elect and the ones that have been allotted for salvation. Once again, giving all praise, honor, and glory to our power. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakudash, double honor to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders of Great Millstone that have taught us this word and that rule well. And peace and blessings go out to the hopeful members of the elect that are worshiping the Heavenly Father in sincerity and in truth. And until 